Is it even ethical to keep a creature in captivity that doesn't do well in captivity? Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking a little bit about camel spiders, and as you can probably tell by the title, I have some pretty disappointing news about one of my camel spiders. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Camel spiders are arachnids, but they are not tarantulas and they are not spiders or scorpions. They are their own family, which I have the pronunciation for. Solifugi. Solifugi. Oh, you can say it with a British accent. Solifugi. Solifugi. But yeah, basically they're not spiders and they're not tarantulas. They are their own kind of arachnid. And they are one of those animals in the hobby that just do not do well in captivity or do not do well long term. Now, there of course are some people who have managed to keep them alive for a year or so, but that is considered like a huge accomplishment if you manage to keep them alive that long. So about a month ago, I unboxed three camel spiders. I unboxed an Egyptian one, which is the black one. I unboxed two of the yellow ones, which is like the more common one you'll find. I was feeling very optimistic when I got these camel spiders. Even though I ordered them from Tom, who kept insisting that they were going to die, I was still trying to be optimistic because I thought I would get the special ones that would live for at least a year. So when I unboxed them, of course, one of them, if you remember, I opened it and I said I didn't know if it was molting or if it was dead. Um, this thing looks weird. Is it dead or is it molting? I don't know. So I'm just going to take a picture and send it to Tom and ask him what's happening here. And I get asked this a lot, whatever happened to it? But it was deceased upon arrival at no fault to Tom. It They just are very fragile, which is why he told me he sent me two of that one. He sent me a large one and a small one, the large one being deceased upon arrival, probably because it was older and more fragile. But I wasn't sure if it was alive or dead when I got it because they also exhibit some very weird molting behaviors. And there is a little bit of a rumor going Going around that a lot of the people who think their camel spiders are dead will throw them away when actually they are molting. This is like a really weird behavior that they will exhibit when they're in pre-molt, which Tom managed to catch on camera, and he actually had one of his camel spiders molt. So yeah, they look really weird and their legs look very similar to the one that arrived deceased, and that's why I gave it a little bit of time just to make sure that it was not molting. But yeah, just a little one month update. <laughs> the yellow camel spider, the small one, is still alive and well even though it's very angry to be alive it is still alive and I thought we could go ahead and feed it and stuff so Sunny is right here and we are still pretty active. However, we have slowed down quite a bit since we've landscaped the enclosure a bit. I fed it about a week ago and I thought we could go ahead and try feeding it again. But as you see, it's not as peppy as it once was. However, it's still very active considering and it does look healthy. I don't think it's sick or dying. I think that it's just settling in. This thing does happily take multiple crickets. You don't want it? Normally it's pretty brutal about eating, so... No. Okay, so it looks like we will not be eating. I don't like that. That's not a good sign because it's never refused food and now it is. So let's hope that this is just like some random like event where it's just refusing food this one time. It did have a pretty big meal about a week ago. I'm not really sure how often they should be eating. Honestly, I hear so many different conflicting information that I'm not 100% sure how often they should be eating, but I have been trying to feed them more often than a tarantula, more closer to like a true spider, because I feel like they're so active that they need to be eating more often. And now that I have moved its hide, it is now bolting all over like crazy. Okay. 
trying really hard to escape. So before we talk about goth camel spider, I did have a little bit of mail I wanted to open really quick from my P.O. box. First, I have this really pretty pink envelope, and this is from Stella's Whatnots. She's one of my patrons, and she sent me really cute stuff before. She has an Etsy shop, so I'll go ahead and link it down below. No, this is not sponsored. She's just really sweet. Oh my god, this is so cute. This is an enamel pen that Stella made and it is a velvet spider just like Wednesday. And I love this entire, look at the little card. It's like a critter keeper. Oh my god. And then there's this little pouch. Oh. <laughs> look at this. It's some sort of brachypilma, probably a Mexican red me. And then it has a little hook right here in the shape of a heart. Stella, you literally make the cutest stuff. Thank you. You do not have to keep sending me this, but I am obsessed. It is adorable. Thank you so much. All right, and I got one more little piece of mail. Let's see. Oh, I know what these are. So a lot of you guys have probably heard about Cobweb Castle. These are some stickers that he sent me. So I guess I should probably talk a little bit about Cobweb Castle because I haven't really talked about it, but I was contacted a while ago by somebody by the name of Elliot who has a fascination with the Southern House spider. I'll insert the name here. Very common spider here in the United States and the South and they are gorgeous. So I've never actually owned one and I am out of range, but Elliot sent me his Cobweb Castle and he also sent me the Kuklian out with it. Let me just show you guys. So basically this is his design and it's kind of like this handmade wooden castle thing. So there's her meals. This actually does come with a tray, but I did not put the tray in because I didn't realize it was a tray, but it comes with a little tray you can pull out. And basically his concept is that you can open this and you might be wondering where the spider is. Perfectly reasonable thought. So mine hangs out over here. Look at this beautiful female he sent me. Now this egg sac is no good. It would have hatched by now if it was, so it's a dud, but that's fine because I really don't know what I would do with a bunch of these spiders. I can totally see this being a really cool contraption for like a classroom. It comes with a bunch of really cool things. I know he has a Kickstarter that he's planning on making, so once all of that happens, I'll probably talk a little bit more in depth about it. We could probably try feeding her. Wonder if she'll notice that. Oh yeah, she's noticing it. <laughs> I think she's actually got it. Oh yeah, she has it. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so we should talk about Goth Camel Spider. So this was Goth Camel Spider's enclosure, and as you can see, she really like dug it up and made it like very cool. She was like very busy all the time, very hungry all the time, never refused food. <gasps> Hi! Oh, this thing is so cool. Oh, you don't want out. You do want out. You don't. All right, I'm gonna let you out. This is the coolest freaking thing I have ever seen. Oh my gosh. Look at it. There was no slow decline for her. She just died. So here she is and I did preserve her and just alcohol. She's not the best specimen ever because she does float. Right now she's kind of stuck right here, but yeah. Oh, it's leaking alcohol. Gross. <laughs> Funny story, one of the tattoo artists that I go to wanted one of my 
<laughs> tarantula preservations so I brought him one and uh, left it in his room or whatever because I was getting tattooed by somebody else that day and he wasn't there and then I woke up to a message and it was like hey is there something else I can put in this jar because I didn't check the lid and it leaked all over my car and I was like oh my god like how terrifying would that be to have this mysterious dead tarantula liquid all over your car I'm so sorry about that, Mike. I, it's my fault. I didn't tighten the lid good enough. It's my little muscles. They were not enough to tighten it to keep it from leaking. And I'm so sorry. So Mike, if you hear this, I'm sorry. I was like, oh yeah, it's just alcohol. That's all I use to preserve. No scary like formaldehyde or some <laughs> crazy embalming fluid or anything like that. It's just straight up alcohol. And I've had, you know, pretty decent luck with all my specimens. Sometimes it'll yellow, especially if it's exposed to direct light. But all you have to do is empty the alcohol out and put more in. And yeah, it keeps them pretty preserved. But yeah, that is goth camel spider. By the way, this happened like a week or two ago. Like it's not fresh. I was actually quite upset when I discovered it. In fact, I was dreading making this video, which is why I am now finally making it because I am not as depressed. I mean, I'm sad, but I'm okay. But also when I went in the group chat and I said that goth camel spider had passed away, Tom responded and said that his Egyptian camel spider had passed away like a while before and basically they all did for the most part in shipping to him which is why he didn't have any available I know that you guys wanted to purchase some and now you guys are looking for them they did not survive shipping very well he only got like three or four alive ones in. he kept a couple for himself and then he sent me this one which we are so fortunate to have gotten to showcase on the channel so thank you so much for that Tom it means a lot even though our time with goth camel spider was short. It was a really, really, really cool treat to see this beautiful thing in person, alive, full of life, full of rage. I am sad about it. I am very sad about it. And I am happy that we got a ton of really cool footage with her that I can show you guys and that we can put on the internet because unfortunately there's just not too much information out there. There's not much known about them. I don't think I contributed to, like hair wise or anything like that because we didn't have her long term. But I am happy that I made a lot of people aware that such a cool creature exists. Um, as for captivity, I just don't think that they make a good captive pet. I asked Tom why they always die in captivity and he said that he thinks it's because of their short lifespan. Span. As for her, it wasn't a slow decline. Normally it is, so I don't really know exactly what happened because she seemed perfectly healthy until she didn't. So I have no idea. It's really hard to know with these sorts of things. Is it even ethical to keep a creature in captivity that doesn't do well in captivity? Probably not. Honestly, I don't think that they should be pets. And I know that's hypocritical of me to say, especially like having them and showing them on my channel. If I didn't have my channel, I probably would have stopped getting camel spiders after my first attempt keeping one years ago. It's one of those animals that I feel like no matter how much research we do, maybe they just aren't meant to be. So yeah, really sad update. Um, really upset about it, but was it unexpected? Unfortunately not. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video despite the sad news. I just wanted to keep you guys updated and let you know what was going on and what happened. So Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video regardless. Like it if you did. Subscribe if you're not. And you want to be. Don't forget, I'm going to ask you probably way too much. It's at Teresa.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon podcast and a Teespring. It is all linked down below. And let's get into the Patreon pet pick. 